you always do the same mistake of fully powering off the system before clearing the CMOS. In about 70% of boards, you aren't clearing anything at all as the power must be in the system for the clearing to take place. If you fully power off by not having electricity attached, then most boards will not actually clear the CMOS. Some can still do it, but many of them clear the CMOS only if electricity can circulate on the board. This board in the specific is a gigabyte one and all gigabyte boards require power for CMOS to be cleared. In fact, in 90% of the cases you cleared CMOS in your videos, absolutely nothing happens even when a difference in the boot process would be clearly seen. Look, let's be honest, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about how computer components work. I'm still learning, there's so much to learn about this stuff, and I've said things that are incorrect in the past. I've had to walk them back, I've had to pin comments calling me out just so that folks know what I said was wrong. It is what it is, okay? But when you spend an entire paragraph in the YouTube comment section attempting to disprove or discredit the things I've done in multiple fix or flop episodes in the past and you end up being grossly incorrect I feel the need to set the record straight I'm not making this so that I can prove this specific person wrong see I already replied to him in a uh, in a follow-up comment but I don't want there to be any misunderstanding at all about what clearing the CMOS does because we do it in almost every single fix or flop episode. So we're gonna talk about what physically happens, what you'll see in software uh, that happens after the fact and how you can clear the CMOS and the steps that you should take uh, in preparation for such a task. And it's not all that complicated. I mean, it takes what, 10, 20 seconds at the most. So with that out of the way, yeah, get your pen and notepads ready. If you're new to this stuff, it's not difficult. It just, um, yeah. It's not what this guy says it is. Okay, stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Let's kick things off with an example, shall we? This is an older motherboard, but the principle is exactly the same. When you want to clear your CMOS, there are about two or three things that you'll want to identify, and the age of the board might affect which one of these you go after first. You might have a dedicated clear CMOS button. You might have CMOS jumper pins. In fact, most boards will, uh, regardless of if a button exists. And then you'll also have a CMOS battery. This one's located up here at the top right, although traditionally, it'll be somewhere down here toward the bottom next to the CMOS chip. Now, CMOS chips for pretty much every case you'll run into as a consumer involve volatile memory. And in plain terms, volatile memory requires that constant power be fed to those chips so that the data stored on them isn't erased. By the way, the opposite of volatile memory is non-volatile memory, and that involves things like this hard drive here. I can disconnect this and bring it from system to system, and I won't lose the data stored in it because it doesn't require a constant power feed. So you can already see how this YouTube commenter is so very off base, and it's a shame he had to write so many words only to end up being so very wrong. If what he says is true, then the moment you power off your system, everything in your BIOS would reset. In every single power cycle, you'd have to hop into the BIOS and reconfigure things the way you had them previously. Could you imagine doing that every single time? You'd have to reset and recalibrate your voltages and your timings and your frequencies, your boot devices, the order of boot. It's just all of that would take so much time, and I would almost feel compelled to leave my system on 24-7 at that point, which isn't really ideal in a lot of settings. So that's why the CMOS exists, and more specifically, why the CMOS battery exists, because that ensures that power is not cut at any point in time to that chip. So we have a lot to thank these little guys for. By the way, they not only keep track of what previous BIOS settings you had instated, they also make sure that your system clock is running normally and that it's not reset upon every boot. That could affect other things in your OS. But now let's talk about how to clear your CMOS. You see me do this in almost every fix or flop episode and that's what the commenter was referring to. So I'm gonna talk about why I do things the way I do uh, and then talk about some other ways you could clear the CMOS that I haven't shown before. First, make sure your PC is powered off and disconnected from the wall. Then hold down your power button 
front for about 10 to 20 seconds. This will drain all caps, make sure there's no remaining power in your rig. And at this point, your system's prepped for clearing the CMOS, but there are three different ways to do it. I like to start first by looking at the back of my motherboard, this rear I.O. plate. If I see anything labeled clear CMOS or like a dedicated button that has something written along those lines next to it, I'll want to start there. Our example board does have this option and you can see it's denoted by this swirly arrow. You'll have a back plate normally that'll specifically label this, clear CMOS or something similar. And depending on the board, what you'll need to do is either push it or hold it down for a few seconds. It's uh, it's literally that simple. Option two involves manually jumping pins on your motherboard. The two that correspond to the clear CMOS function are these two right here. Now the text is actually written somewhere else on this board, so it might be a bit difficult to find. If you're in any doubt at all, just swing over to option three, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but once you find those two pins, again, with your system fully powered off and disconnected from the wall, you can take something like a magnetic screwdriver and hold it across these two pins for about 10 to 20 seconds. Again, it's uh, literally that simple. The third option and the surefire way to clear your CMOS, although it does take a bit longer just because you wanna play it safe, is to remove the CMOS battery outright. This one again is located in an unorthodox place on the board, but once it's removed, some say you wanna leave this out for about five or 10 minutes. It usually doesn't take that long, but yeah, do it just to be on the safe side to ensure that the CMOS has been cleared, especially if you're troubleshooting. We are basically cutting power to the chip manually by removing the power source. So you wanna make sure that power is fully drained from the board and five or 10 minutes is a pretty decent, usually more than you need buffer. And just like that, your CMOS is cleared. It's literally that easy, right? You see where this is going. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to clear the CMOS, but I think it's important to understand what's happening behind the scenes as well. What you're doing is effectively cutting power to the CMOS chip, which is why everything is resetting because the CMOS chip is more often than not volatile memory. So there you have it. Fortunately, not everything you read on the internet is correct. There's a lot of conflicting information out there. And if you had any shadow of a doubt about uh, whether or not a comment like this one here was correct or not, well, hopefully those rumors have been dispelled. Just because someone takes a lot of time to explain something that does not mean suddenly what they're saying is true or that what they're describing is any more accurate than someone else who might do it in shorter form. I suppose I should reflect then because I've been in a similar position as this person, believe it or not. Yes, I've made many mistakes even here on this channel. I've had to pin comments that openly refute things I said in those videos because turns out I was wrong and there's still so much I'm learning. And that's why I end every single one of these videos more or less the same way. By the way, subscribe, like, comment if you haven't already. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.